Welcome to part 3 of this video series. In this video, I'm going to talk about the importance of consistency in your SLR paper. I'll explain it using an example of my own paper where I'll show you what mistakes to avoid when connecting the content of your figure to the text in your paper. This video is the third video in the video series where I'm discussing what you should do before you submit your paper for review. Do check out the other videos in this series. Links are in the description below. I'm sure you will learn a lot by watching these videos. All right, let's get started. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Vidhi Poddar. I'm an associate professor from Australia. On this channel, I make videos for PhD scholars, postdocs, and early career researchers. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon and invite your friends to join too. Also, join my research community and build your research network. We have over 1000 members in the community so far and I would like you to join too. See, in the earlier videos, I discussed about the importance of proofreading and how to avoid common mistakes with figures and tables. I also explained different variations of paper rejection and what you should do in each case. These earlier videos have laid the foundation for us to take this next step. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the importance of consistency. When I say consistency, I mean you need to check if you have written everything that you have mentioned in the figure or in the table. See, there has to be consistency here. For example, if you have a figure that shows how you have classified the literature for your systematic review paper, then you need to ensure that all the parts of the text that is shown in the figure are properly mapped to the text in the paper. Now imagine if you have one word in the figure and a different word in the text, it will confuse the readers. You need to avoid this. Let me give you an example. Refer to my paper published in IEEE XS. This is a Q1 journal with an impact factor of 3.7. When I received the first draft of this paper, I found that there were a lot of inconsistencies and the paper was not ready for submission. This paper followed all the suggestions that I'm covering in this video series to make it ready for submission. Specifically for this video, I'm going to show you how to focus on the connection between the figures and the respective text in the paper. Okay, so let's have a look. I want to show you this figure from my paper. This figure has a proper structure. It has four headings like paper co poor quality, domain specific, validation, and privacy issues. It has sub items under the main headings like poor quality has three sub items, domain specific has four, and so on. Now, as a reader, when he or she is reading the paper, it would be great if they could easily find these headings and the sub items in the text so that they can follow the paper clearly. But in the first half of this paper, the section looked something like this. If you look at the left page, you will find that the figure was described, but there was no structure. I needed to carefully read to find out what each paragraph was talking about. I could see that there are eight paragraphs in total, but they lacked the structure. What I did next was I highlighted the words that were used in the figure to understand what each paragraph was about. Now look at this version. Here, I have highlighted the sections of the topics with a yellow background. As you can see, I had to identify item by item to make sure that what is shown in the figure is actually described in the writer. There is still no structure to the writing. Okay, now let's look at another version. Here, I tried to connect the dots, that is the paragraphs with the figure to identify what each paragraph was talking about. When I did that, this is what I came up with. What do you see here? The second paragraph begins with quality as the first challenge. My first observation is the figure says poor quality and the text does not use poor quality anywhere. This was inconsistency number one. The text discussed low resolution, data sets, poor OCR quality, skewed images, watermarks, and so on. Some of these things were missing in the figure or were written differently using different terms or words. Next, I could not find the reference to blur, variation lining conditions mentioned anywhere in the text. 
This was inconsistency number two. Now let's look at the paragraph four that talks about task specific data sets. See, task specific is a sub item of domain specific heading, but I could not find the heading domain specific anywhere in the text. This was inconsistency number three. Moving on, the next paragraph talks about data validation. The phrase data validation is not there in the figure. Instead, the figure refers to validation or quality assessment. So where did the data validation came from? So this was inconsistency number four. Remember that what you write in the figure should be reflected in your write-up in the same way. Don't confuse the reader by introducing random terminologies. Next, there was just one line as a separate paragraph, which was talking about data sets. I could not understand why this was the case. After that, the next paragraph continued the discussion on data sets, which was the first heading in the figure. You see what I mean? There is a complete lack of structure and flow. There is a lot of inconsistency in this write-up. Now, do you know what was the biggest inconsistency in this write-up? See, the figure has listed fourth challenge as privacy issues. And to my surprise, there was no description of this challenge in the text at all. What should I call this? Inconsistency? Of course it is an inconsistency. Probably the biggest one. Remember, you cannot miss out on anything like this, what is shown in the figure. You need to avoid making such mistakes at any cost. So this section was around 500 words long. It lacked structure, it lacked consistency, and it looked boring. Although the figure, I would say, was really nicely done. If you look at the figures in this paper, they are really, really well done. I think if you watch the earlier videos in this series, I mentioned the importance of drawing good figures and tables. This paper follows those suggestions to the dot. I really like these figures in this paper, and I, I guess you should check that out too. Anyway, coming back to the topic, I want to tell you that the same text with a bit of modification can be transformed into a very interesting write-up. Now I'll show you what the final paper looks like. Are you ready to see the transformation of this section? Ta-da! There you go. Look at this section. It's, it looks stunning. It's perfect. It's structured. It's easy to follow. It's, it clearly connects all the elements from the figure with the text. Now you can clearly see there are four subsections. Each subsection is covered in one paragraph. Each subsection has a heading, which is in bold. Everything that is covered in the figure is reflected in the text. It is complete, it is thorough. There are no inconsistencies. This looks perfect. Readers will enjoy reading your paper if your paper looks like this, because they can easily find equivalent content in your paper. It will be easy for them to read it. So what is the key take home message from this? You need to have clear figures that are consistent with the text that describes the figures in your paper. Now, this paper has 19 figures and 14 tables. Just imagine how long it would have taken me to fix each section in this manner. And remember, I do fix it line by line. I'm very methodical and very rigorous when it comes to writing. Do you want to see some more examples? Then here you go. See, there is a lot more than this when it comes to writing a perfect SLR paper. This video series is just scratching the top of the surface. To properly write a thorough SLR paper, you need to follow a well-designed system. A system that will tell you what to cover in each section, what all different sections to have in your SLR paper, and how to connect these different sections cohesively, and so on. I cover all this and much more in my SLR course. If you're serious about writing an SLR paper for a high impact factor journal, you should enroll in my course and follow it step by step. This course is a must for every researcher. There are six modules and over 150 lessons in my SLR course with videos, research activities, and writing tasks. The course teaches you step by step what you need to do to write an SLR paper thoroughly. I have given hundreds of examples and sentence templates that you can follow to speed up your SLR paper writing. You'll also receive a word template with all the headings and subheadings that you could include in your SLR paper. 
Not only that, you will also get figure and table ideas that you can use in your SLR. By joining this course, you will be part of my SLR community and I will be there to answer your questions in my research community. There are so many students who have already completed this course and have successfully published their SLR in high impact factor journals. You will be the next. I'm confident about that. If you have any questions about this course, join my telegram group so I can answer them for you. Link is in the description below. If you have any questions or compliments, please leave them in the comments below as I enjoy reading them. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. Please also share this video on your social network like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere where you're active. So others can find this video series and benefit from this as well. I want you to have faith in me and believe that anything is possible if you have the dedication, courage, and the right guidance. Like I always say, believe and succeed. This is all I had to say in this video. Thank you for listening and have a great day. All the best and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you very much.